All right, what's ever up, everybody? I am JD the Dragon, and I am here with my dragon sister, Alicia Kingston. And you know what we're here to do? We are here to talk about the land. Book two, The Forging. We're part of the Miss Village Mafia. That's what Norm's we do. rule! <laughs> Norm's rule, that's it. And if you caught me earlier before Johnny Greenhand's stream, I did do the first three chapters of this book live. And if you missed it, sorry. But anyway, with that, let me introduce my sister with me. AK, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, what is good, YouTubes? We are back again, representing the Mist Village, where everything is awesome, even though people die sometimes. That that's just how things work in the land. It is a very dangerous place, and we have been going through the trenches with our boy Richter. And I am quite happy to be here with my dragon brother from another mother. And we gonna get into this. Hopefully, we'll get through the whole book. But y'all know how we do, going off on tangents and <laughs> all types of nonsense. So there might be a stream too. We don't know, but we gonna do what we do right now. So we usually have live love with us. Uh, having is going through some things in her personal life. It couldn't join us tonight. So everybody, if you will, wishes, prayers, whatever you got, whatever you feel, send them her way. So everything works out for the best for her. Um, with that, what I would like to do is if AK was willing to, to give us a quick brief breakdown of what we realized in book one before we get into book two. All right. Yeah, you know what? I actually forgot. I was supposed <laughs> to be doing the summary. But. That's okay. I'm going to wing it. I Give it off I've the top of your brain. Yeah, I think I've listened to it enough to where I remember. You know, we've, so we, we meet Richter and his crew in the real world, quote unquote, the real world, playing a game called The Land. And it's an R RPG video game, you know, where you create your character and you go through these awesome worlds, handling quests and building up a power structure about yourself. And lo and behold... Our, our buddy Richter goes into this uh, hidden room and he finds some goodies there. And uh, one of the main things he finds is, oh, it, I, I can't say it's really a doorway, but he's, a voice comes on and he's asked, you know, if he's, you know, in search of adventure and all types of coolness like that. And he says, yes. And he's asked two other questions that go along with that whole uh, thing. And he says, yes, Bryce heard and done. Words are not wind in, in the land. So if you say something three times, that's basically as good as a Harry Potter unbreakable bond. Yep. You can't, you can't, you can't uh, not do it. So he gets transported to the real land that he was experiencing as a video game on earth. And what he finds is this is not a game. This is now his life. He is being brought in from our human world. He is known there as what is called a chaos seed. And we have chaos seeds because there are some very higher power beings that are in exile and they want to get out of exile. And they found the way to do that is to spread chaos. And Richter and many, many other humans from Earth get transported to the land. And our boy is the, the luckiest damn bastard to ever get put into an RPG game. He ends up in this awesome secret glade. He gets a little bit of tutoring from an imp. And this is where we truly find out uh, for the first time that words are not wind in the land. He gets tricked into a promise by this imp. That hasn't come through just yet exactly what's going to happen, but I think in the next book we'll, we'll see where that leads because that imp did make an appearance in the, re in the most recent book that came out. Mm -hmm. So once Richter, you know, he finally gets a little bit of his bearings and, uh, you know, he's, he was a pretty high number in rank in the, in the uh, real world on Earth. But here in the land, he's starting over. As the imp said, he is a basic bitch. He has no cool weapons, no cool armor, doesn't even have underwear. Honestly, he just has like some, <laughs> some 
rough spun wool clothes to put on. And if you've ever won't worn wool up against your skin, it's it's not pleasant. Got it. so it's horrible. You can imagine how that's messing with him not having no drawers on. Uh -huh. Just it's it's not it's not pretty. <laughs> so, so so once he leaves this glade now explore try to make his way he's what he meets uh some some um sprites who mm -hmm. are that I, I, I almost want to put them akin to the children of the forest for a game of thrones reference pretty just close. so y'all can somewhat picture what they look like they don't look like you know forest they're like, like mm, the force, uh, but they're about that size. What I want to say, and I know people would take this the wrong way, and I really hope you don't take this the wrong way, but they're like Asian midgets. Yeah, that 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 that's actually exactly what I was about to say. Yeah, and yeah. like I said, I don't want you guys to take that the wrong way, but the way and, they're portrayed is literally anywhere between like three foot five and four foot and Asian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the tallest one that we've met so far is about five feet mm -hmm. and that's and because he's mixed with human so he yep. has that extra bit of height and you'll meet him as we discuss the book yeah and he is a badass but we gonna get yeah. to him in yeah. a minute and that actually reminds me as far as this book is concerned this is the book where richter gets his ass kicked by an old man and <laughs> it's fucking funny as hell and awesome he's like pal may teaching the bride in kill bill 2 <laughs> he's fucking sweet but we'll get to yoshi later so uh, we meet this group of sprites, and you know, sprites really don't like humans, and you know, they, they, there's some clashing in the beginning there. But then he ends up meeting the uh, um, the heart mother, who is the leader of the wood sprites that are in the land where he is, and you know, some things happen. And you know, the that first sprite that we that we met was named Scion, and there was a lot of friction between him and Richter in the beginning. They did amend themselves and and grew to have a very good friendship and brotherhood uh be between each other and it's it, it was really cool transition to see um richter gets sent on a bunch of different quests he ends up finding a place of power um he gets several relics to advance the home that he has he um ends up going to a kingdom called eve which is where he gathers up a lot of a uh, population to come and help build up his village and make it try to make it uh, uh, something great. He has a he has a very good vision for it, and I think he's well on the way to making it. Um, in Eve, what we found is there's a lot of uh, prejudice between the races, and because this is a fantasy story, you know, there's humans, sprites, pixies, dwarves, goblins, everything is you know in the land and in eve a lot humans especially are are true not not humans i'm sorry all of the like what we would say the magical fantasy races are treated terribly so mm -hmm. richter luckily finds um a tavern and the uh, run, person that runs that you know mama she ends up you know hook him cooking him up he gets to meet this guy named tarad and Tarad, you know, basically brings him into the calls, lets him know exactly what's going on in Eve and how he can get people to, you know, move to his village. Tarad speaks to him and Richter proves his worth when he helps Tarad get a bunch of um, different uh, um, of the magical races that were in uh, captivity and being tortured and horribly treated. He gets them all out of there. They go back to his village. Mama gave him a special gift by in the form of Randolphus. Um, Randolphus is basically the hand of the king. He is like a combination of Tywin Lannister and John Aaron in one awesome kick-ass ball. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, without Randolphus, really Richter would not know what the hell to do with himself. He really wouldn't. No, he'd be he'd be really lost without that man. Extremely lost. Yeah. So. You know, once they once the party, everyone gets back to the village, you know, they're literally building everything from the ground up. The only thing they have is the land and the resources that they can find. So they go through, they get, they work hard, you know, they have to fight a little bit and a bunch of things happen. I, it, for anyone that may not have read it yet, I'm not going to say spoil. everything and spoil. <laughs> 
but it's a pretty kick-ass adventure. And by the end of it all, you know, there, there are alliances made and Richter is again, like I said, well on his way to having his dream be realized for the village of power that he seeks. So from there, we start we get into book two. Yeah, we get into book two. So for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about tonight, the land is a high fantasy story. Lots of magic, lots of creatures, everything like that. But it's written in a video game sense. So it's written like it's written like an RPG. So as Richter progresses through the land, he's levels raised. He gets to choose what he wants to do, how he wants to raise himself. And he can also help build his village and the people around him. So if you've ever played an RPG video game, that's how the land is written. You get a main story and then you get these levels happen. This is where he's at. This is what's going on. And then you go back into the story. I love it. Um, the way Alaron Kong has wrote this story is phenomenal. And Johnny earlier, and I never actually thought about this, but Johnny Greenhands earlier put it out perfectly. He goes, holy shit, it's not vague magic like a song of ice and fire. Mm. No. Not it, at all. Alaron Kong is very detailed on every piece and everything that goes on in every his piece. magical world. And I love it. So with that, in the first book, we start off with the dark court. In the mm -hmm. second book, we start off with the light court. And Who uh, I suspect may not be as black and white, good and evil. No, this the, as, the light and dark court are portrayed. very yeah, the light and dark court are very, very gray. If there's any gray in this story, it's with the light and dark court. Mm -hmm. Um and me and Alicia were talking about this earlier. There is somebody watching out for Richter, and you're going to learn this as we discuss this book, especially when we start getting about, oh, I'd say a quarter to a halfway through it, you'll see what we're talking about. So with that, we meet the light court. <clears throat> um, and the light court is like, that's exactly what they want to be, the light court. Very honest, very broad, very open. But you realize it's not so broad, not so open, um, because the counselor walks in, he has to take um, seven steps, seven times into this little area. Then once a thing chimes, he's allowed to take seven more steps into another area where mm -hmm. he meets the king. And the king is wondering, you know, have you been able to pinpoint this magical occurrence that's going on in the land? And the counselor goes, um, not really, but I have pinpointed a lot of high concentrated chaos magic. Now, in the land, you have humans, you have elves, you have dwarves, you have sprites, you have orcs, you have this, this. The mm -hmm. chaos magic is the human beings from the world, real world being brought to the land. That is your chaos magic, and they've learned how to control this magic. Chaos is exactly what it is. It's chaos. It's very hard to control. Mm -hmm. Whoever has learned how to control this has brought several people to the land. And we know that the dark court is the ones that created the land and has created the chaos mm -hmm. controlment. But we don't know how they've done it yet. But with that, they go through and they're trying to figure out how they do. Now, the, the, the king of the light court has relics of dragons. He has relics of a unicorn. There's a relic of a phoenix, and people are wondering what happened because now there's just an asteroid filled around this planet where the phoenix was at that was warming this planet. And it's real intriguing because of how it is because in the midst of this conversation and everything, as the high counselor is, is consulting the king, the king has a consultant standing right behind him that's completely in all white. His face is shaded. You can't see his face. He stops and he whispers in the king's ear and the king's like, oh, okay. Like there is no disagreement. There's no agreement. It's just like, oh, okay. And in the process of this whole situation that everything's going on, he's at the same time thinking about the pixie race that he had actually raced 
from that. AK, do you have any more on that? Yeah, he um it almost seems like he was trying to do some random experiment. And just from the gist of what I get from the light and dark court, it seems like he was just doing something because he was bored. Yep. And and he released uh it was essentially a virus into the land and it wiped out all of the pixie race. And while he's talking to this guy that that's whispering in his ear, he thinks, you know, that thing I did back then at, with the pixies disappearing, that was wasteful. Mm -hmm. So, so he recognizes that he basically committed genocide, but it, he, it's just it's still just a fleeting thought. Like this is how little he cares about life. He, he's not remorseful about it. He's just stating that, okay, I probably should have taken a different route. Meh. Mm -hmm. And that's how like the, the light and dark court operate. They're the most overprivileged of overprivileged Southern Lords in, in Westeros, basically it's yep. yeah. And, and, and probably that thing with the pixies and a whole bunch of other stuff along with that is probably why they were banished and they now live in exile because the older gods that are still in, in the shadows looking over things. They're like, yeah, okay, that that's enough of y'all get out. But now it's been millennia upon millennia. And again, they're bored. They want to go back in and find new toys to play with. Basically that, that's just, I get from them. Um, so he said, hold on real quick. T asked, why did he kill the pixies for, for the fuck of it? It, it really yeah, doesn't it, seem like there was any reasoning at all. Yeah, it, it, that, 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 I'm like he, he it, it's literally I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't been told why the High King of the Light side has put this virus out to kill the pixies. We have no idea. Um, this is the one thing I love about how Alaron Kong writes, and trust me, I've tried it in his live facebook streams to get him to spill beans and he just doesn't fucking do it i've tried <laughs> he will mm -hmm. literally go no spoilers and continue talking right like i, I asked the, the very last live that both me and jd were in that he did i asked if we're going to see the light and dark court in the next book because we don't see them all the time uh -huh. nine times out of ten it's maybe once Every like every yep. other book, we hear something from, and and not both, but just from one side. Mm -hmm. And his answer was, "I feel like if I answer that, it's gonna be a spoiler." Yeah. So, I, and for me, I took that to where we probably are gonna see one or both of them because by not answering, you kind of gave me the answer. <laughs> we have so I mean, that's that's my theory anyway. That's yeah. my theory. Because he um, may not, he may not be doing that. And shout out to you. Sir Aleron, if by chance you happen to come by this video, because the reason JD has that t-shirt that he's wearing is because Aleron saw the last discussion that me, JD, and Lav Lav did, and he got, reached out and uh, offered to send us free t-shirts for talking about the book. And yes. we appreciate that, good sir. Please keep writing this story, because it's awesome. Yeah, very much appreciated. And, you know, we didn't do this for any recognition of any sorts and kinds. We do, this, we do this just like we did uh, Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire. We love the story. And, uh, you know, with that, the group that we have, the people that follow us when it comes to A Song of Ice and Fire, we're trying to introduce you into something new. And that's why we do this. It's a story we love. We hope you guys enjoy it too. And that's the reason we're here. So, Aleron, yes. Um, thank you for the t-shirt. But most of all, thank you for the story and the books. Mm -hmm. it, it's phenomenally written. Um, and I, I, I can't wait to continue the journey with you. Anyway, with that, so after we meet the light and uh, the light court and we go through all that bullshit, we go back to Richter and uh, Richter has just got done and he sent the villagers that he rescued back to the mist village, but he needs to go see the hearth mother. So he goes back to the hearth mother and uh, I'm going to read you the opening paragraphs <clears throat> to this. And he go and it says, be welcome at the hearth tree, Richter of the mist village. Hisako said with a smile. And welcome home, my son. I've seen you grown in strength, hopefully in wisdom as well. Now, in the last book, um, Sion has no magic. He can't, for some reason, he's not able to open it. And in the last book, Richter is eventually able to open up air magic to Sion. 
So that was one that was really cool. So Sion replies, he goes, thank you, mother. Yes, I have learned much and I've found a good friend and ally. Now, in this book, no, it's in, yeah, in this book, it, towards the end of book two, we find out why Sion has such a prejudice towards humans. And tell you the truth, I don't blame the guy at mm, all. He had good reason. Yeah, he has he very really good reason. Did. Don't get me wrong. He made a mistake and he knows it. But at the end of the day, he had a very good reason why he hates humans. Anyway, uh, Richter walked forward and he took her hand. He goes, Hearth Mother, thank you. Sign is more a friend to me. He's more like a brother. There's no way I could accomplish what I've accomplished without him. I'm formally ex um, I formally extend the friendship and the welcome of the Miss Village to you and your people. I sincerely hope that you will ask for any help that you may need. Um, so in the first book, Sion kind of fucks Richter over and like, killed by wolves. Oh, there's no kind of. There's no kind of. He straight up let my boy get eaten alive by wolves. <laughs> by wolves. <laughs> he did. He let him get fucking eaten. Richter killed the first one and he was celebrating and the second one took his fucking throat. <laughs> um, so uh, for Richter to be able to, you know, kind of push that aside and be like, you know what? Bygones, let bygones be gone. Bygones. I've met a really good brother. Um, he helped me through all this bullshit. Now, you know, I have the, the friends of your allies. I thought that was a really cool segment for him to be able to push that aside because most people wouldn't be able to push that aside. I mean, I'm sorry. If somebody let an animal or a wolf take my throat out, that's going to be hard for me to forgive, even in a video game where I come back to life. Um, because if you don't come back to life, you're going to die. So <laughs> that's a big one. A huge one. Uh, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, no, I think that's it. Actually, I, I did like you know Richter's initial reaction though. Once he came back and he got back to the heart tree, the first thing he did was punch Sion in the face, <laughs> and I thought that was an appropriate response. So I was here for it. Yeah. So they go through all this. And they get ready. They go kind of back and forth and exchange goods or whatever. So after that, um, Richter decides he wants to go back to the grove where he was originally spawned, where he meets the Ip Xerxes, right? His name is Xerxes. Xerxes. Yeah. So he, where he meets the Imp Xerxes. The reason he wants to go back to this grove is because it has a pond and it has a lot of herbs. So when they get there, there's a wall. You can't see through it. It just looks like a, a sheer cliff. And he, he goes, hey, Sion, <laughs> walk forward. And Sion kind of gives him this double take. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, just watch for, walk forward. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. So Sion walks and literally <laughs> smashes his face on a cliff. And Richter loses it and starts laughing. And Sion gets a little pissy at him. And uh, he's kind of like, yeah, whatever. Anyway, grab my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hey, kind no, of, real quick. Yeah. Just um in the chat, T Baby said that you know she'll she's probably gonna add it to her read list. I will encourage you to get the audiobooks on Audible before getting the physical books because the way Nick Podell narrates it is extremely well done. And there's oh, also man. a bunch of uh, which is unlike a lot of other audiobooks, there's sound effects. Mm -hmm. in this one and for the way some of the announcements go like when you level up or if you get offered a quest or right, that he there's there's music and sounds that go along with that so i highly recommend um definitely getting the audiobook along with the physical book and is it on um, youtube no it is not t baby um the one thing i will say and the, it, it's something that i've learned through having kindle with amazon um if you have kindle on your phone you can go on to Amazon and you can buy the book for two to four dollars, but you can also include the audio book, which was which they do, which is called a whisper sync, and you get both the physical and the audio copy on your phone for like 10, 12 bucks, which is cheaper than a credit every month through Audible. 
Mm -hmm. So, and I like the whisper sync because I can sit down, I can read. If I'm tired of reading and I just want to follow along, I can hit play and watch the uh, read along with the author. Or as I'm driving down the road, I just hit play and let it fucking play as I'm driving down the yeah. road. Whisper sync. I highly recommend. Cool. Yeah, bo both mediums I, I, I recommend together, especially yeah, but, the audio. Oh man, Nick Twaddell kills it. He, he he does. He's one of the best narrators I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And with that, what I want to say is if you want to create a comparison of how good Nick Podell does, get the land and listen to how he does that. And then get the King's Dark Tidings by Kel Cade and listen to how he does that. And the differences between the characters, the voices, it's 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 phenomenal. The guy literally does what an author asks him to do. It's perfect. And Alaron even said this. He goes, I went through five or six different narrators before I found Nick. And when I when Nick read, I think he said he read three or two or three pages, and he goes, That's it. That's my guy. I've got yeah. it. You yeah. Know, it was perfect. Um anyway, so they get to the the cliff and and Sion bumps his nose. <laughs> And Richter's like, grab my hand. And Richter and, and or Sion gives him this cross look and he goes, What? He goes, Grab my hand, I'll help you through the wall. And Sion's real standoffish about it. He's like, No, it's fine, just grab my hand. So <laughs> Sion grabs his hand and Richter goes to intertwine their fingers, and Sion grabs his sword. <laughs> Richter is such a damn dick sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's why, like you already know. That shit is on the rocks, and you want to try to pull this fuck shit. So he, he, Richter intertwines their fingers, and before Sion can pull his sword, he drags him through the wall into this beautiful fucking grove. And he goes, "See, I told you." And before he could tell you, told you, Sion grabs his sword and with the blunt side of his sword, whips him in the fucking back of his knees. <laughs> <laughs> that part is fucking hilarious. I love it. I'm sorry because if I was, I would have done the same damn thing to Richter. <laughs> Always being a ass. <laughs> anyway, when they get to the grove, Sion's really impressed with what he sees. Uh, a very, a lot of lot, a lot, a lot of rare herbs <coughs> that can be used for potions and healing and magic in the whole nine yards. And they find a skull, which I'm going to let uh, AK elaborate on the skull that he finds in the pool of clarity. Yes. Um, you know, at first, I don't think we're told it's a pool of clarity, but um, somewhere along the while, while they're in the glade, you know, Richter's kind of chuckling to himself, looking at Scion going through and picking out all these different herbs and stuff because Scion's doing it looking like a good little kid that just got like everything in the catalog for Toys R Us. So while that's happening, he happens to notice that there's something glowing in the water. And once he reaches in to examine it, he sees that it's a skull and then a prompt comes up saying, you know, this is uh, such and such from millennia ago that was alive and he was great because of A, B and C. And upon his death, like he, you know, basically put himself in this pool and it and that's what made it the um the pool of clarity because he, he was extremely well educated and and scholared in his time so if you take a drink of this water now that's infused with his essence you basically get uh higher points in all of the quests and stuff that you go on and it, it's extremely helpful and what we find out well, they, they, they touched on it in book one, but what we see is that magic and magical items are extremely guarded in the land. And for him to have this whole pool, pool of clarity to himself, like he can basically put those in a, a, like a vial and sell them for top dollar. Basically, he can sell them for, I think it's three to five hundred dollars American, which is three to five gold pieces yeah yeah it's 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 anything magic is something that's highly prized so that means if you have something to sell that people can use then you can become a very rich person doing so and he's and and it's not cheap to come by 
at all. So him having this pool of clarity is an instant blessing, which again is why I say Richter is like the luckiest fuck that ever got sent to the land. <laughs> he, he is. He, he for real yeah. has the hookup. He does. Um, you know, we eventually down the line, you will actually meet a new chaos seed. <clears throat> And the guy that is the new chaos seed is very jealous of what Richter got handed right off the start. Yeah. I can't tell you when this is going to happen, and I can't tell you what book it's going to happen or what happens to him. But he's very jealous of Richter and how Richter got to start. And uh, but yeah, uh, with the with the pool of clarity, um, he's able to identify it through his um, identifying skill. Basically, he can look at it. He picks up the skull of the scholar and. There's a prompt and it gives him all the information of who the guy was, what the race was about, and how everything rolled downhill. And he decides he doesn't want to be a warring race. He wants to be more of a peaceful and, and you know, give his knowledge to the people. And instead of, you know, he ends up actually, I think, committing suicide in the pool is how he dies. Because his fam his bloodline, the way his people are created, they can live for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. So after that, um, they decide to take, you know, the night and stay there and they go back to the heart tree the next morning and they're talking about um, how everything is gone, um, if he got everything. And Richter ends up pulling um, – or no, wait, before that, when they come out of the glade, there is a female sprite waiting for them and i think ak would love to be able to tell this situation with uh daniela with scion so if you want to continue this yes yes after they leave there we meet daniela and immediately it seems like scion goes on guard because she's there and it, it's not explained specifically what happened between Daniela and Sion, but it, it seems like there's, I don't want to say there was a romance, but there's definitely a something that it, that it, that was, and I think is still between them. It's like that, that push pull of, you know, will they, won't they, that you get in TV shows for, for young lovers. But da Daniela, she's um, she, she's just a, she's just a cool chick. She there's, is. There's a lot of, of very great and uh, she female is characters in this very, book. And Daniela's one of them. Yeah, and she's very very hooked on Scion. Very yeah. hooked on Scion. Yeah. Like they 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 love to tease each other. Like it almost always seems like they're arguing, but they're they're not. They it, it, it's just how they interact, and there's something very special so, that you see right off the bat with their bond. Let's let's put it this way: Have you ever been around a couple? Like you met the guy or the girl, and they're like, "Hey, let's go to this party," and so you go to a party with them, and you know you catch them looking at their you know this this guy or this chick or whatever, and you're watching them, and you're like, "Huh, there's something there," and they kind. of start like giving each other shit on like a serious level but you know it's joking but it's it's getting a little more heated than it should be and you kind of push one to the side and you're like what the fuck's going on you're like dude i like that chick and i don't know what to do about it mm -hmm. you know it, it, it's that type of situation scion really likes daniela and diana then daniela really likes scion Unfortunately, they're not really able to express each other's feelings except Daniela bugs the fuck out of Scion and Scion wants to get away and be able to relax for a minute. <laughs> it's basically like like that that little boy in your first or second grade class that keeps pulling your damn hair or pushing you or some bullshit because he doesn't really he likes you but he doesn't really know how to get your attention. So the only thing he can do is just fuck with you randomly on a bunch of like mildly annoying things just because that's the only way he can think to interact with you to where you're going to give him attention. So it's something like that. And and that's on both sides yeah. for them. Like so, you can tell the attractions there. Oh God. It's, it, it's, it's funny. And Richter uses it to his advantage later on. We'll get to that. So they get back to the heart tree. They discuss some things and uh, Richter's like, Hey, hearth mother. Um, I need to talk to you personally. And so the hearth mother dismisses everybody and they kind of walk. And as they're walking, um, Richter notices 
as they're walking. The grass kind of parts for his Sako as she's walking, not mm -hmm. as she's walking through it, but as she's walking before she steps, the grass parts in front of her. That's a really cool thing if you think about it when it comes to them. And I'm, I'm noticing a lot of people in the chat going, well, I'm lost. I don't know what's going on. When you get into this story and how deep Alaron has placed the magic of this world into the story, you will understand. It, it's beautifully written. Yeah. So, again, Hisako's walking through the grass, and it's parting for her. And they stop. And... They're talking about this fight that happened in book one with Sion and Richter where they fought this huge skilling. And, and the hearth mother is like, the only skilling I've ever seen is the size of a raccoon. And he's like, no, 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 no. This thing was like the size of a fucking bear. Yeah. What we found was is it was underneath a hearth tree, which is what you have in your village. But this hearth tree was dead, but we found a seed core. As a present, I would like you to have the seed core. And as Sokka goes, no, 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 no. If you have the seed core... This was meant. It was meant for, for you. you. Yeah, this was meant for you. This wasn't meant for me. This was meant for you. This is your secret. So Richter goes one step farther, and he goes, "Um, then I would be honored <clears throat> if you would come with me to the Mist Village and plan it with me." And she goes, "Yeah, of course." And earlier before this, Richter had been pushed off as a trade partner because his trade skill wasn't high enough to go with the with the with the sprites. It wasn't a diss against him. He just didn't have the, the skill to be able to trade with him. Mm -hmm. So for this to happen, Richter's very happy. He's like, cool, whatever. And she goes, I'm going to put a blessing on the Seacor, and it will make it just that much more potent. And so we realize in book one, we find this chrysalis that this evil um, – uh, was it an orc? I think it was a goblin. Or a goblin had. Yeah, it was a goblin um, shaman that had this e mm -hmm. had this evil wand – but on the one was a chrysalis, and inside the chrysalis is a pixie, what we were talking about earlier. And <clears throat> the hearth mother has been trying to free the pixie, but their magic isn't strong enough. Their life magic just isn't strong enough. So she's hoping. She looks at Richter. She goes, let me come with you to plant the seed, and I'm hoping that the magic of this seed core will help release the pixie and release our other half of our soul. So if you've ever played a video game where you're able to get a soul familiar, you get a, a partner, a mouse, a hawk, or anything like that, the sprites have pixies. That's the other half of their soul. So for millennia, the sprites have been missing the other half of their soul. So AK, if you want to elaborate on that. Yeah, um, real quick, just to answer T in the chat, She's saying, why do they hate Pixies so much? I don't think the leader of the Light Court hated the Pixies. I really think he was just bored and thought up this thing and wanted to see what would happen. And he, he didn't count on it killing the whole race. No. It, it was it, that that just happened to be a side effect. It's kind of like the comparison of uh, the children of the forest creating the, the Night's King and the White Walkers. It was yeah. something to help them, and it ended up fucking everything over. Right. It's kind of like you good. You good. You don't got to apologize. Um, okay, with this uh, chrysalis that was found, they, they find um, a pixie that's been put in stasis. And what we find out is she's actually, she was a, a princess of the pixie race. And to save her, before she died, her mother put her into stasis in this chrysalis. And somewhere along the line, the chrysalis was found by this uh, goblin shaman, and he used it to give a boost to his magic in the staff that, uh, that he had. So <clears throat> once the heart mother sees this, you know, she, she knows that if that Richter's uh, place of power, the Miss Village, has a um, magical uh, ley line of life magic. So once they plant the heart tree there and she puts that blessing on it, it will be like an infusion, a huge boost of life magic. And if, if, he, if she can put the chrysalis near it when that's happening, then that amount of life energy will be enough to revive the pixie because the, alone they can't do it. The pixie's been in stasis for too long. 
and it requires an extremely high amount, high level of life magic to bring her back. And they do end up succeeding. It, they it, do. It's uh, pretty spectacular mm. how, how it goes about. But they go do. ahead, Jake. Um, so with that, after they've had this conversation, the, the hearth mother is like, or Richter's like, yeah, that's, that's fun. I want you guys to come with me. And she goes, okay, um, I want you to meet our sort of adept Yoshi. So like we said earlier, you get to meet the old man Yoshi. So this is where Yoshi comes <laughs> into play. Yoshi, how am I, man? Oh, I love Yoshi. So Richter's like, awesome. You know, I get to get some training. I get to level up, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but also I want you to bring um, Sumiko as a advisor to your village, which is a older Sprite, a medicine, life, magic healer. And, and Richter's like, yeah, that would be phenomenal. She's like, okay, good. Go meet Yoshi over here. So Richter walks around and he decides he wants to practice with his sword. So he's sitting there and he's practicing and he's practicing and he's trying to hit these, these blades of grass and the blades of grass keep moving. And as he's trying to hit the blades of grass, Yoshi walks up and he goes, quit playing with it. That's how you go blind, son. <laughs> so, Richter's like, what the fuck am I getting myself in? So he notices that, that Yoshi walks up. Oh, um, so I want to do some quick shout outs real quick before we go any farther. Um, in the chat, I'm going to start at the beginning here. Hold on. We have T Baby, OTDA, LMR, Cami, Eduardo. Lady Laura of Dawn of Starfall. I uh, seen Cammy in here earlier. We have Tara T. We have Amanda Kane. Um, Luke from Drinking No Three No Things just showed up. Um, I think about got everybody. Yeah, we have Bubba uh, Husky. Mother, and, uh, yeah, Bubba Husky's in here. Mother of Kraskins is in here. Dog and show's Aaron in Water. here. Huh? And Aaron Water. Dog show just came through. Yeah. So Red Witch. Here, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for coming through here. Um, for those that just popped in, what we're talking about is Land. It's a book by uh, an author named Alaron Kong. Um, very humble guy. He's a doctor down in Florida. Um, you guys can catch us live. Literally, he does live streams on Facebook. Just find him. Type in Alaron Kong on uh, Facebook, Lit RPG on uh, YouTube, and you will find him, and you can uh, – I'm following. Anyway, so well, after the introductions. <clears throat> so Yoshi shows up with a – bundle of sticks and Richter's like what the fuck are the sticks for and Yoshi's like pull out your sword and I'll show you so Richter's like all right and he pulls out his sword and he goes he's standing there looking at Yoshi and he gets ready to take a swipe and before Richter knows what the fuck happened he's literally grabbing his side going what in the fuck mm -hmm. and he goes I didn't even realize he moved he's that fast so when he analyzes Yoshi He's a level 26 adept sword, sword and his profession is warrior. He's a badass. Yoshi mm -hmm. is the fucking Krim. And through this whole chapter, and I'm going to let AK elaborate on it, but through this whole chapter, Yoshi just fucks him up. So AK, take it away. Yeah. Like I said in the beginning, th this is the book where Richter repeatedly gets his ass kicked by an old man, and it is the funniest shit ever to watch like to, to put it in context that scene in kill bill 2 where we see the bride going to pile my for her training and he tells her to you know grab a weapon and actually let me see what you can do and she thinks she's the shit and she's going through and this dude no weapon at all is manhandling her giving her the fucking wet work and that is exactly what happened with Yoshi and Richter. And it's absolutely hilarious. Like, Yoshi, to me, it, as far as all the fighters that we'll see throughout this series, there is only one other person in the story that I think is a better fighter than him. I'm not going to tell you who it is, though, because it doesn't <laughs> actually come up until book seven. Mm -hmm. And when you find out who it is, man, you're yeah. going to fucking be surprised and it's going to be the most epic shit ever. Yep. But for right now, Yoshi comes up when he comes up with the sticks and he tells Richter to, you know, prepare to attack him. Richter's looking like, um, you not going, 
use a sword? You, you gonna you gonna use sticks? And Yoshi's like, yeah. I mean, and, and l l later on, one of my favorite scenes with Yoshi, what comes up is they're in this dungeon and something happens. And before Richter can even blink, like Yoshi handled the problem. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and Yoshi sees him looking and he just shrugs his shoulders like, yeah, I'm nice like that. Mm -hmm. And he keeps walking. Yoshi, Master right. Yoshi, seriously, is, is is what you should be calling him all yeah. the time. <laughs> he, is, he is that motherfucker. He, and I absolutely love his character. If you guys have ever seen um, The Karate Kid and me and Dog were talking about this in the chat earlier when I was streaming the very first of this book. He goes, first we're going to wax the or, or sand the floors. And I'm like, then we're going to go wax a car and we're going to stain a fence. Yoshi reminds me of Miyagi. Mm-hmm. And it's literally that real dry, no laughing sense of humor. Because in the point of this, Richter's getting his ass kicked and he's getting really pissed off about it. <laughs> and Yoshi pops off. He goes, you know, this isn't any fun for me either. And then a couple seconds later, he's like, never mind. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> and, you know, and there's some more complaining on Richter's part. And Yoshi's like, you know, you can just walk away. All, all, all you got, all you got to do is leave. But of course, you know, Rick, Richter is stubborn as hell. So in his mind, he's like, "No, I'm not going. I'm not going to uh, leave just to spite him. I'm going to keep getting back up." And that's commendable. It is. But throughout throughout the training session, Yoshi just gives little quips, and he's like, "And, and one of my favorite ones is like, only sissies throw up." Richter throws up. Well, I guess you're a sissy. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's so hilarious. Like the amount of shit talking and it's that literally she does is fucking brilliant. No sense of humor at all. There's there's no enthusiasm in right. Like it's like it's like Grey Worm when when Tyrion was trying to get him and Sandy to have that drinking session with him. Yeah. And and Grey Worm's like, I make joke. That's exactly what Yoshi sounds like. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. And, I love it. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> and Luke. Um, just picked up the chaos, the very first, the land, the founding. Dude, yes. if you like lit or if you love RPGs, you're gonna fucking love the land. Definitely. Tyler Hong Kong is a phenomenal author. Um hey, yo, awesome. for also, Luke, sure if you do if you do catch up to us and you wanna jump on and, and chat about it at any time, let us know. Yeah, no you're, more you're more than welcome to join us. We're we're always down for people to discuss this story with us. Um, but yeah, so after Richter gets his ass kicked from literally the middle of the day till dusk, Richter hasn't fallen, and it's literally out of spite. And he goes, I don't care if it takes me 20 minutes to walk 100 yards. I ain't falling. <laughs> and let me tell you, at the end of that, like y'all y'all saw how, how the bride was – at the end of her training sessions with Kyle May, this is exactly what Richter looks like. He, his muscles are sore. He, he's like half limping to when, when they get ready to get moving, but he knows if he's going to be any good, then he needs this training. And one of the things that Richter asks is, you know, cause while, while they're sparring and they're doing all this training, Yoshi is showing him um, different fighting moves along with, you know, just a actually really knowing how to handle the sword, Richter is noticing that his uh, experience and leveling up that he's, the points that he's getting are a lot higher than when he was just in a fight. No, 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 and it, no you're actually backwards. <clears throat> he's noticing oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah That's right. Cause right. and it comes later into it. So we'll get to that. And I'm going to kind of go through some things. So what happens is they go back to the heart tree the hearth mother's like, we're going with you. We're going to go plant this. And we're taking a bunch of people with this. And Richter and Sion kind of look at each other like, what? And Yoshi's like, yeah, the hearth mother hasn't left the tree in a millennia. We're going with her to protect her. Mm -hmm. So they go on the journey. And uh, they, they're they getting to a point, And it's literally every day that Yoshi is just fucking Richter up. And Richter eventually levels up in swordplay. And he goes, you know what? We have practiced for hours upon hours upon hours, and I'm leveling really slowly. You know, with other masters, I've leveled really fastly, and Yoshi 
it, it, this is one of the best examples I can actually ever put out there when it comes to somebody getting trained. He goes, you can beat your fucking sword against a monster for hours and level up, and you're still going to throw it around like a fucking gnome having a spasm. I am teaching you sword forms. Mm -hmm. It was it, 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 Alaron Kong, the way he fucking wrote that was just beautifully done. Right. It's the difference of being a random, you know, good fighter in the street versus being a boxer or an MMA fighter. There's mm -hmm. specialties in the fighting styles. It's, it's, you know, randomly kicking someone and getting a lucky shot in a street fight and actually knowing Muay Thai to where you can put your foot in the exact body place you need to to actually take a person down. It's not just about what you're doing. It's about form and skill and how you execute it. And that is what Yoshi is trying to teach Richter. He said, you know, just because you can, you can kill something, it's just you waving a club around with sharp edges. Yep. I am teaching you skill. So yeah, Yo Yoshi is one of the most badass characters in here. And I love it. I do too. Um, it, it's awesome. <clears throat> so throughout this, you kind of get Scion being kind of a dick to Richter about getting his ass kicked. And eventually Yoshi goes <laughs> and he puts a <laughs> finger <laughs> in Scion's throat. And Scion goes from his ass off to literally go eh, 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 choking and Richter loses it because Yoshi's like, you really want to fucking try right, it? Because you you're not coming out there practicing with me. You know, it, 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 Scion, shut the fuck up. He yeah. had no more words for the rest of the night. It, it, yeah, it's awesome. So we learned that not also that the 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 hearth tree and the and the sprites they found out that the bugbear problem is getting a lot bigger and a lot worse than they thought it was um and with the goblins as well so with that's the reason that yoshi and a bunch of the sprite soldiers are coming with richter to the mist village is to make sure that the hearth mother does not get attacked by the goblins or the bugbears while she's on this journey um, but also with Richter getting trained by Yoshi on this journey, he's not just getting trained. He's getting trained by um, Sumiko too, and he's learning life magic. And then what happens is he ends up learning um, lesser healing and lesser cure and lesser minor shield, I think is what it is, is the three spells I he learned. So. And, in the, and he goes, well, they're not that great. And, and she goes, well, with your leveling, and the way you're able to level, your those spells will become critical in your life. So always make sure you keep those in mind because the more you level, the more those spells are going to help you. So they end up getting back to the they get up end up getting back to the Mist Village, and uh, Richter's like really hyped about wanting to plant this sea core and get the the magical tree growing and all this shit. Well, Futin and anybody that doesn't know, Futin is a ghost of a dead master mage of the Mist Village, and he actually ended up binding his soul to the Mist Village. So now he's this floating little white orb that helps any master that takes over the Mist Village. Mm -hmm. So while they're sitting there talking about plotting the Sea Core, um, the Hearth Mother's like, well, let's do it now. And uh, Futon's like, um, wait, hold on. Are you talking about planning a sea core? And Richter goes, yeah, why? And he goes, well, a lot of the former masters have always wanted to plant a sea core, but they always said the sprites wouldn't want to get one. But with you talking about a blessing and the sprites being here, I kind of, you know, I've kind of figured out what you're doing and you're wanting to plant a sea core. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, well, with what she's wanting to do, what the hearth mother is wanting to do would be perfect for the hearth tree. Mm-hmm. But our magic, our ley lines, rely on life, dark, water, and air. The sea core is a perfect example of life magic. There is a storm rolling in tonight, so the wind and the rain take care of water and air. Mm -hmm. And we need to do it at night because of the dark, the magic right. of the dark. And the hearth mother goes, 
You're right. I was thinking about planting this in my village. You're hundred percent right. This isn't my village. This is yours. And this is the way the magic lay. That gives me a lot of time to figure out what's going on. And this is one of the best parts of the story. AK we yeah. learn the familiar. Oh man, man. Now meeting, me meeting Richter's familiar. You know, he, he gets back home talks to Futon, they figure out they're not going to plant the tree right then and there because it's the middle of the day. They're going to wait till nighttime and the storm rolls in. And while while all they after they figure all that out, you know, he goes back and um checks in with Randolphus and I think he started like reading some a, a scroll or something or other. But he found out that you know he could get a familiar. And what that is is basically um it's a, a a future piece of your soul that you can bring into your physical realm. And when he looks to see how many points it can be, how many points it takes to get it or what he'll have to spend to get it, he figures out that with, um, it's, it's the mana, I think. It is it's the mana. mana. He, yeah. he carries, I think he carries like 500 mana. And yeah. the village produces, I think, a thousand in twenty-four hours. Right. So and with the like, spell he's trying to cast, I think is twelve hundred and something. Yeah. So with the combination of the village's mana that he can tap into, and with his mana, he can get a familiar, and he does this, and one, it, it's a little dragonling that comes up, and I, I, I picture in the beginning her being. And it is a her um, being a about the size of a house cat because she can like easily she flies so she can easily like land on his shoulders and curl up around him. So she so she's tiny. She's very powerful, but she's tiny. So I I, I want to go through what happened is so Richter sits there and he's talking to Futin about how this is going to work out. And he's sitting there. He's legitimately breaking down how much mana an hour mm -hmm. the mist village will produce because he has this spell which is called C confusing mist around his village that if anybody wanders within i think 500 yards of his village this mist is around it and it confuses them that way they can't find the village and so he's trying to figure out he's like okay i have 500 mana the mist village has a thousand I need 1300. We're okay. It makes, I think, 42 mana an hour. Or so, yeah, the, the mist will eventually disappear. But in the morning, I can recast the spell and everything's going to be good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, Richter's like, fuck it. And he casts a spell. Well, when he casts the spell, he everything gets wrapped in the dark. And he's kind of fucked up and he's kind of confused. And then this tree comes into view and he's kind of looking at this tree. And then this forked tongue starts flicking as he can see it out the edge of this hole. And he's like, what the fuck is that? And it starts turning at him and it's getting ready to bite him. And then all the thing snaps and he's on his ass and he's going, what the fuck happened? What the fuck happened? Futin, Futin, what the fuck happened? Futin, like, I don't, what did my spell work? Like he's really confused and he's angry and he's cussing and he's kind of messed up. And he goes, why didn't the spell work? And Futin's like, um, the spell did work. And he's like, what do you mean? He goes, turn around. And when he turns around, there's this little cat-sized dragon staring at Richter in his face. <laughs> and her first words are hungry. That were the legitimately the first words he hears in his mind because they, they communicate telepathically is hungry. And he goes, are you hungry? And she goes, meat. And he kind of like snaps back. And it, it, I love it because after that, he like he's like, okay – well, okay, good boy, let's go get some food. And she like hisses and spits at him in a bunch of air. And he goes, um, girl? <laughs> and she starts purring and he's like, okay, uh, girl, okay. let's go. Yeah, and they communicate psychically in their minds. Like Alma can't speak physically, but they communicate together through thought. And her name, like I just said, is Alma which I thought was very appropriate because in Spanish, Alma means soul. And she yep. is basically a future part of his soul. So the name makes sense and it's very fitting. And JD, I gotta jump off real quick. I'll be right back.
Continue. So, um, he gets his soul familiar, and he's walking her through the tunnel, and she's still like giving him shit about being hungry and everything. So he walks her up to the hunters, <clears throat> and she just jumps off of him. And she goes and starts attacking this deer and all the hunters kind of like jump back that have been skinning this deer and they're kind of like got their knives up and shit. And Richter realizes, you know, before this gets real bad, I need to make this, you know, kind of toned down. So he's like, this is Alma and she's going to be around for a while. And he knows Alma can't quite communicate in full sentences and everything. So he's like sending pictures of family and relationships and this is your family and all this shit for a little while. And she's kind of pissed. She says, like, it's mine. He's like, no, we have to share. So eventually he communicates that they need to share food and all this. So he gets the hunters to cut a hunk of meat off. And he's like, all right, you know, um, if she's still hungry when you're done, just cut another size off about that big and feed it to her. I need to go talk to Randolphus about what's going on in the village. Um, the one thing you learn about Richter is Richter doesn't like big responsibilities. Even though he's the master of this village and he is responsible for a lot of lives, he doesn't want that responsibility. You can see in his actions because Randolphus starts talking about, you know, the food they need, what they need to build, what this, 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 and this. And just kind of sitting back and going, fuck, I'm bored. And they kind of go through all of it. Now, in that, we get to meet one of my favorite characters finally on this story. His name is Krom. And yes, he's a fucking dwarf. And if anybody knows me, I like the dwarves. So we meet this dwarf named Krom. And Krom ends up becoming the village smith. And he gives Richter a bunch of shit. And he's wanting these certain types of metals and all this and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, you know, I have another magic core. And Krom gets really jittery about it. And he kind of goes, you need to bring me these better metals. You need to bring me this. You need to bring me that. And we can figure out what we're going to build. And Richter's like, whoa, 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 hold on. I still have a lot of other things I need to do before we focus on building a better forge. And a messenger comes up and talks to Richter. And he goes, hey, you know, the hearth mother needs to talk to you. Let's go. And if you want to take off from there when um, the sprite comes and gets Richter to go meet the heart mother on where to plant the C core, it's all you, AK. Actually, I'm slightly blanking on that one. Where the hearth mother uh, wants to meet him? Yeah, well, I don't remember exactly what it was she was meeting him for. I Where think she wants to, to discuss the pixie, but I. Uh, yeah, she wants to discuss, at the discuss moment. the pixie, but she also wants to discuss where they're going to plant the C core. Yeah, I don't know why I'm totally blanking on that. <laughs> All right, I'll continue. I'm sorry. So, yes, please continue. So the hearth mother wants to meet Richter, and Richter's like, yeah, tell her I'll be there shortly. And on the way there, he runs into what is the elf is, elf, elf's builder name? Um, he takes after a character. Uh, that shoot. What the hell is that woman? Starts with an R. Giovanna? No, no, no. Not the ship builder. The actual oh, build, the builder builder. Um, he that, that's what's, uh, what's his name? My breakfast dude. Bacon and eggs. Yeah. Oh, damn it. What the fuck is his name? <laughs> I'm blanking out I on don't, I don't know why I cannot remember that right now, but he is one of my favorite characters because really his biggest concern is bacon and eggs. And, and if y'all know AK, y'all know she loves her breakfast. <laughs> this man has so, breakfast, second breakfast, third breakfast, all of the breakfast. So Rose when, Swan. That's his name. Rose there you go. Rose Swan. So when Richter meets Rose Swan, he walks up to him. He goes, Hey, Rose Swan, how's it going? And Rose Swan turns on to him. He goes, It's getting built. 
<laughs> right. like, how, how, how's the building with, with the, the, the forge and all that? And he's like, um, it's being built. And he says <laughs> something else to him and Rose Swan just looks at him like, mm. and yeah, and, Rose and that's Swan, the bulk of Rose Swan's communication. It's yeah, just random. Rose Swan points. growls. Every time Richter asks him the question, Rose Swan just growls. He's like, mm. and that's how it is portrayed by Nick Godel. He just, <laughs> so he goes, well, what do you need? More wood, more labor, <laughs> more, more bacon and eggs. <laughs> mm -hmm. More <laughs> bacon and eggs. <laughs> That's his concern. And he's actually, he, he really is a very <laughs> polite person when he's talking to his people. Like when he's giving orders, you know, he, he's very polite and direct about it. If he has to go do something, but he still wants another plate of bacon and eggs, he, he always says, you know, can you please bring me this and this and that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and he goes about his business. So I'll, you know, later on, we'll see exactly what Rose Swan is really <laughs> interested in doing with his life. But for now he is a, I, I do believe he's a journeyman. At, he is at, a journeyman builder. Yes. He's the yes. best builder that he had, that Richter has. He's a journeyman and he's very good at his job. Um, so you were, he, he leaves Rose Swan and, the elf mistress that you were just getting ready to introduce, which from the definition of Richter is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. I seriously, if Alron actually manages to get Netflix to pick this up, and I think it's very smart so that he will go to Netflix and not like want some type of feature length movie, Netflix will do the damn thing on this. Mm -hmm. And I just really hope that they cast these people appropriately if it happens because yeah, Shovana, she, oh. from, from the way she's described, she, she, she is oh. all of the sexy, like mm -hmm. all of it. So I, if it happens, I'd be very interested in seeing who they pick to play this. And she's sassy as fuck. Uh -huh. Like while, while they're talking about, you know, the build, the, the ship, because you know, there's not an easy way to communicate in the land. So without like transport, your own transportation, you're going to end up paying a hell of a lot of money to get back and forth from where Richter is to where he can go and get supplies and trades and whatnot. So he's working on having a ship and she tells him about the different types of ships that she can build. And if she can get a soul stone with the right type of soul in it, she can build him a ship that, uh, six of them, six yeah, of them, yeah, six of them that will basically skip across the water and be like one of the fastest vessels ever. So hey, the one saying I love about this is he goes, I want to kiss you. And she goes, hold on. It's not that hold type on, of party. It's not that type of party. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it just, just the way, and, and Nick is very good at the female voices uh -huh. that he does. Like when, when you hear, how he portrays all of these characters, you absolutely firmly believe that they sound exactly like that. You know, and, and it's kind of crazy. Um, so you're you're listening to it as as she's walking around, and 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 literally, it's she's walking, and her hips are swaying in a very seductive way. And Richter gets, you know, Richter's thinking about. It. He's like, I've been caught every time staring at her and before this time he gets caught staring at her you know he talks up and you you can just tell he's drooling at the mouth of this woman <laughs> like she's horribly. basically and an even sassier black widow how scarlett johansson portrays her in the marvel movies she if 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 black widow was a shipbuilder i think she'd be uh shaped very similarly to show mm -hmm. that's what i always thought of her as yeah yeah so <clears throat> we get past that and eventually um richter makes an announcement of when the the c core is going to get built and he goes and meets with uh his Sako, and they decide where they're going to plant it which is at this cliff edge of the mist village where it's really protected it's inside the borders of the land that he owns it's up against a cliff like a really high cliff like it's going to be really hard to destroy this tree and richard's like yeah this would be perfect so we get the the planning of the tree and uh isako has got it above and she hands it to richter richter to plant and richter kind of takes it as 
a compliment. And she goes, no, no, no. This is your land. This is your sea core. This is your magic. You're the one that needs to plant this. Mm -hmm. So Richter grabs it and he's holding it and it's spinning and it's spinning faster and faster and faster and faster. And he's watching the green veins just go crazy. And of all of a sudden it just shoots into the ground. And Richter's like, what the fuck? And it's, it literally digs this perfect little hole through the ground. And all of a sudden the ground starts trembling and it starts shaking. And this tree, boof, and it pops up. But it doesn't just pop up as a sproutling. I mean, it continues to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow by the blessing, by the magics. And eventually it sprouts out. Well, at the same time, the pixie comes back to life. AK, continue. Um, real quick. Uh, to answer LMR, uh, actually, Luke says that you know he's in for the series, dude. Seriously, you're going to love it. You're yeah. gonna love it. You're gonna want to talk about it like we are. So, definitely, <laughs> when you catch up, if you want to jump on, Luke, when you're ready, you can join. Yes, you can join the Mafia. Village. <laughs> um, LMR says, you know, how is their clothing described? What style for medieval. Yeah, it, it, it's a very mi medieval type clothing for the sprites. Yeah. They're right as of right now, they're the only real um, armor. Yeah, they're the only real type of art clothing that we see. Everyone else is in like regular stuff because, you know, the village is just starting up. There's only basic things around that they can make. So just random clothes is what they're wearing. However, for the sprites, they do. Um, keep their their clothes are very akin to the forest like it's almost made to blend in with them um i i, I don't want to say like leaves or anything no they no, have it's more leaves. like so if anybody's ever paid attention to like archery archery hunters that, that hunt with a bow <clears throat> their armor is kind of based off of that it's very, very mm -hmm. camouflage <clears throat> so when they're in the trees or in the bushes they disappear that, that's Actually, you can go to Alaron's Facebook page. Yeah, and he's got pictures of a uh, Scion and and a couple other of the characters, so you can see exactly how he. So, uh, if I remember, that. Scion's got like this brownish armor with some green yeah. spots and a green yeah. cloak, or green, yeah, green cloak flying behind him, mm -hmm. kind of situation. So basically, it's kind of like a camouflage that they disappear in. Um. But anyway, if you want to continue like on, yeah, kind of like kinda with the like pixie, the yeah. But so yes. continue on with the pixie. Yes, after the seed core gets the blessing from the heart mother, and Richter plants it, he it, when he when he's holding it, when it first starts spinning, it, he notices it actually starts to burn his hand, mm -hmm. and you know as soon as it like gets yeah. to top speed, he's like you know whimpering a bit because it hurts. And it shoots down. He goes to turn and uh, run because he doesn't know exactly what's going to happen with the ground shaking. And he sees that everyone else has already retreated about three feet back. Like he's the only idiot that's that stayed there holding the damn thing when he should have already let it go. So what we see, you know, the ground starts shaking and this tree starts coming up and it, it looks like it's almost uh it's full silver on the outside it looks like extreme like it's the skin is extremely smooth and it's warm the to trunk. the touch and yeah and it's very warm to the touch and when one once like you know the, the the magic smoke clears the heart mother she looks up and she gasps and she says a quickening and that's the type of tree that grows it's a, it's a quickening and it's not a tree that it has ever been seen on their plane of existence. Mm -hmm. Like there are different planes of existence. Higher beings ha have different tiers that they're in. And this, the quickening is a high level tree. So it's it's phenomenal that Rick, that Richter was able to grow it. Again, see like we keep saying, there is something watching out for Richter. And you will realize it when you start listening to these books. Mm -hmm. There is something looking Someone out for Richter. Someone is looking out for this kid. I don't uh -huh. know what it is about him on Earth that they saw, but once they yeah. got him, they were like, okay, now nah, this is this, this is the guy. This yep. is the one we need to send all the care packages to because he's going to do the right thing. And even though he doesn't know it yet, he's going to do what the hell we need him to do so we can get the fuck out of exile. 
Yeah, somebody's pulling the strings on his ass. Yeah, someone is definitely so, looking out for the kid. Yeah, we don't know what's special about him yet, T. No, we we have we don't. no idea. He's a good dude, which you'll find out going through this. Yeah, story. Is he he's really a, is good a good dude. guy. He is Richter is Richter has got a huge heart. Mm -hmm. Very nice guy. He's willing to give anybody a chance. So basically, um, to answer that, what's so special about him? He has a really big heart. He cares, and he says this perfectly, and I, I, we'll get to this eventually, but he says it perfectly is, I was raised to look forward and care for the people that were around me at that point in time in that present. Mm -hmm. And you know, most people don't live like that. Most people live with the people that they grew up with that were in the past. A lot of people don't look at the present and what's around them. Mm -hmm. There is, you know, the one thing I will give, um, even though this is a very high fantasy book and it's written like a video game, there is a lot of life lessons that he writes in this book. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of pop culture jokes too, but the life lessons that he writes in these books. And for most people that don't know, Alaron Kong is a black Asian author. Mm -hmm. He's one of the very few black authors that has made it as big as he is. And <clears throat> I, I get a Especially lot of emails this from genre him. Of book. Yeah. And I get a lot of emails from him where he goes, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of racist yeah. shit. I deal with a lot of fucking stupid shit. And I just respond to you, keep your head up and keep doing what you're doing. Cause eventually people are going to see what you're doing. I'm right. one of those people. And that's uh, why Richter is the way he is. He, yeah. That's why he had such an issue with how the human nobility were treating people in Eve. He wants yep. a village that has a, pl a, a plethora of everything. Gnomes, pixies, sprites, dwarves, orcs, goblins, everyone living together and thriving and being happy together. And Yep. That's what he that's exactly what he's building. When you look at the people that he was able to get into the Miss Village, that's what he wants. And and he doesn't, you know, want to just rule over them or keep them under under any type of um, you know, like with his with his foot on their necks or anything. No, he wants everyone to grow and be as powerful he's, as they can, as knowledgeable as they can and everything. Yep. So the so the village all of them can thrive. He's yeah, he's that boss for the land. You know, he's kind of like my boss. My boss is the boss that would he he wants to be your coworker. He doesn't want to be your boss. He wants working beside you, and that's what we're, what Richter reminds me of. Mm -hmm. How uh, how Aleron is writing this character is he's the character that you want to believe in, that you want to fight with, and that leads into what happens, which I'm going to explain now. Is so. Um, the quickening is born, and in that, the, the the pixie is released. Now we learn that the pixie, her name is Aurora, and she is a Alora. Alora, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's Alora, and Alora is a queen of the pixies. And we learn that her mother, her race, everything is dead, and she sings a song, and she's. It, this part actually really does give me the chills when, when Nick is explaining it. She sings a song about happiness. Then she sings a song about sadness and loss and losing everything she's ever known and being confused and doesn't know what she's going to do. And with that, the people that are standing there watching this go through this very high to very low, literally everybody standing around them is tears. crying and in tears. And Alora goes up to Richter and she's, you know, Richter's like, I'm sorry for what happened. And Richter in this split second makes one of the biggest decisions of his life. And he goes, I want you to be a part of my village. I want to be able to protect you. And she goes, well, that's great. You know, point me to a tree and oak a spring, this, that. He goes, no, this one, this quickening. And she almost rejects it to a point where she's like, no, no, no. This is a very magical tree. For good reason. I don't want to be, yeah. I don't want to be a part of this because if something goes wrong, it kills it and it kills everything around it. And he's like, no, no, no. I believe in this. 
I believe in you. I want you to have this. And she takes it. And then everybody in the village again stands up. They're cheering. They're clapping. They're laughing. They're having a good time. And as weird as it is, is while everybody's having this really good time, Richter's sitting there and he's almost kind of like in this depressed mood while this is going on. He's thinking about home. And at that point in time, Sion sits beside him and he goes, why don't you ever talk about your home? And Richter literally goes, motherfucker, it's none of your fucking business. Leave me out. Leave it alone. And Sion goes, all right, dude, cool. And he just sits there with his friend. And Richter's sitting there and he's stroking uh, Alma. And he goes, you know what? My mother was one of the kindest women you'll ever meet. My father was a very funny and humble man. And my brother had the biggest heart of anybody you will ever meet in your life. And he goes, I was a healer or what my people call a doctor. And they kind of go into it. And then all of a sudden it just goes back into silence. And, and Sion's good with it. And Sion goes, well, why don't you ever talk about him? And he goes, because I was raised to live in the present and not live in the path, past. And I chose this life. I'm the one that pushed the button. I'm the one that made that decision. I can't regret it. I can't change it. This is where I'm at. It was, it, it's one of the most powerful written parts of the land that I've, that I've seen throughout these books. And for uh, a side note, there are side effects that happened with the quickening being planted. Everyone yeah. in the village that was there to <clears throat> witness it got an extreme boost in their points. Like some of them probably went like two or three levels up from where they were. And that's very significant because the average person in the land doesn't level up as quickly as Richter. And they, mm -hmm. you know, they, you level up by getting twist quests and doing different tasks and things. And, you know, for a lot of people, um, humans, I think once, once they level up, they only get like four, points to spend to ad advance their skills. Richter is a chaos seed. Chaos seeds get six. Yep. So everyone that was there, they got leveled. They leveled up a couple levels. Everyone that heard the pixie song got extra experience from that. And it increased the, the overall morale of the village and also increased their loyalty to Richter because they're actually seeing you know, that this guy is actually like legit trying to take care of them and help make their lives better, not for the sake of himself, but for the <clears throat> sake of everyone. Yep. So with that comes one of the biggest mistakes Richter ever made. Mm. So remember a lot a couple of minutes ago when I told you he got the familiar and uh, he realized the mists would disappear. So he had warned his people about this. He told them before the, the ceremony of the quickening, people in my village, the mist will eventually disappear, but we got nothing to worry about. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, when the quickening was born, it shot a giant flare of magic into the sky. And a so flare of magic. Yeah. And Richter wakes up to Alma screaming in his mind, trouble. Trouble, trouble. Danger, wakes, Will Robinson, danger. Yeah. So he wakes up and he takes off running. And when he gets to the top of the hill, the hearth mother, Sion, Sumiko, um, and Randolphus, are, and um, what is his um, the type that uh, starts with a Tarot. T? Tarad is standing there. Tarad is the, the head of his security. <clears throat> and they're all standing there and they look over the edge. And he realized there's a fire on the longhouse and he can hear the people screaming inside of it. And he sees these giant, huge humanoid figures walking through his village. And he goes, we're under attack. Sprites protect the, the quickening, protect the pixie queen, the rest of you with me. And he realizes that they're bugbears. And while he's fighting, he kind of like realizes when he looks over that the bugbears had created a, um, bridge that they that Richter had had removed because he's like I need to protect my village. He'd removed the bridge to make sure his village was safe. 
and he they'd made a, a makeshift bridge to get across and they end up killing the scouts but in this he loses a lot of fucking people but with that he gains a lot of respect from the sprites ak do you want to elaborate on that one yeah so when this when this fight ensues you know as soon as it starts you know he he takes out a couple of bug pair the bug bears and sumiko she she's right there beside him helping to fight these uh creatures off and there's also like two mages with them and once he actually really gets into the fight he's like oh shit they got through because they saw the damn light from the quickening and because the mists were not there because he had used that mana to summon alma that's how they were able to find the village but he, he he doesn't dwell on that for very long because you know there's a job to do right now so they go in they get things they they get things going sumiko the the fucking powerhouse that she is she starts a spell and i think the spell actually took a good two three minutes mm -hmm. for her to cast because the, depending on the level of spell that you use in the land, there's a cast time. Like some take only one second and it's like maybe just a small swipe of the hand. Some are more <clears> elaborate <throat> where it takes five seconds to where, yeah, incorporate both your hands and do, you know, some, some random signs in the air. And that is what uh, brings forth the spell. Sumiko summons a basically an, an archangel from a higher plane of existence. And this this is where the fight really turns. This guy comes in and just starts fucking wrecking shop. Mm -hmm. so, she basically summons an angel. Yeah, yeah. She 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 summoned an angel, and he comes in, and you know he asks, you know, what is your bidding, mother of the forest? And she just says, you know, pr protect these people. So he goes to work. And while he's doing that, Richter, his main focus is trying to get to the lodge house because a lot of his people are trapped in there. Those are their sleeping quarters. And a lot of people are trapped in there and the fire is growing because the building's made of wood mostly. So y'all know how easily wood burns. It's amazing. So they go Existence through. Fire. Yeah, they go, they go through. Um, a, a few of the sprites <clears throat> fell along the way. Um, <clears throat> For his villagers, eventually, I think it was maybe around 10 was the number. There were two in particular that stood out. One of them actually did live. Richter, he tried using the healing spell on him. It didn't work. So after he pulls this kid out of the, the burning building, he starts CPR. And CPR is not a thing that's, it, that seems to be known in the land. Because after, you know, he goes through and the boy starts coughing and he actually comes back, there's a prompt that comes up and, you know, he finds out that, you know, knowledge of healing in uh, unconventional ways is, is a very key component in, you know, helping yourself to thrive in the land. So because he used this earth technique that he knows and not magic, it helped him along. And the other child unfortunately did not make it she was a four or five year old little girl i believe mm -hmm. and she ended up dying in the fire and that absolutely devastated richter it like, crushes not, him because he had talked to her before that yeah he is not a ruler that does not care about his people and if you didn't already feel like he genuinely cared this scene here is where you, you find out he truly cared about these people. Like the father and the mother, they were very distraught over it. Richter actually held her while she was holding like a toy that, that uh, Petal had and sat and cried with her, not for any type of show, but because he was truly feeling that loss himself. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he absolutely fully admitted it while when the fight ended, and you know that everyone was cheering for you know hooray for lord richter hooray for our savior he yells out to the crowd no no don't praise me for this 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 shit was my fault this happened because i was too ambitious i was and too I was greedy selfish and too selfish and i wanted to have this thing and i jeopardized 
all of our lives because of it. And he totally so, owned up to his mistake. I, I, I want to read how Alarong depicts what happened, how he writes this out. And he goes, Hisako cried out in outrage and pain. Six of her people lay on the ground. Their bodies were bloodied and ruined. More than one was decapitated. Eleven bud bug bears bodies joined in the unnatural position. None were moving. The remain the remaining ten sprites were split between firing firing out of the village to keep the reinforcements out or attacking the knot of the bugbears still inside the walls. They were outnumbered, even if their attention had not been divided. At least 15 bugbears remained inside the earthwork walls. The only reason the sprites had not been overwhelmed was the presence of the angel. Zaraki was battling his crystal sword against the unseen bears. So you get, and that's what I love about how Alaron writes, is you get the prospect of what's going on around you, but also what's going on inside of Richter. So he's seeing this fight going over there, this fight happening here, these dead right here, but also what he has to do in the situation. The the mind work of how you portray that is it's phenomenal. It's it's really well written to have one second one of the most important people of the story crying their fucking eyes out over their dead. In the next second, the angel battling and destroying. But also not that you get the dead fucking enemy. You get the sprites fighting their asses off and what he needs to do next. I love how he writes this story. And that's why I fell in love with it. It, it was, oh yeah, this is a good story. It was literally, this man's writing is phenomenal. It, it really is. It, it's legitimately a phenomenally written story. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know what we see also in the aftermath, um, Sumiko, while she's mourning for the loss of her own people. Isako. She doesn't, his, yeah, I'm sorry, Isako. She doesn't look at Richter with any type of blame in her heart. He's a young ruler, and she has been around long enough to know that young rulers make mistakes. Night, T, baby. Thank you for coming in, hon. Have a good night, T. She knows that young rulers <laughs> make mistakes, and she looks at him with sympathy. Because mm -hmm. she knows that he is going to take this loss of his people very, very hard. And that that's proven when he, you know, admits that this is all my fault. And I am so sorry. I will do whatever I can do to make it up to you. Um, he ends up actually making a blood oath that no matter what happens, he is going to avenge the deaths that they had to suffer because of this attack. And I believe when he does that, a prompt comes up and he's told he has exactly one year to fulfill his blood oath. And um, Hisako, she, she warns him, says, you know, I understand how you're feeling, but you need to recognize that that oath you just made can end up being a very dangerous thing. So just be careful and tread lightly in the future when you when you're in your feelings and you think about making these oaths. Words are not wind in the land. If you don't do something that you say you're going to do, it will cost you a lot in the mm -hmm. end. Horrible. And, uh, another um, good part that we saw in the aftermath: there were two elders. Um, one, I believe, was an elf, and the other a dwarf. Mm -hmm. And they were basically um, acting as you know, liaisons for their uh, race of people that were in the village. And they come up to him and they say, you know, we understand, you know, what happened. And basically, thank you for owning up to it. We know it, 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 you made a mistake. That was it. But you didn't try to hide from it. You didn't try to shuck responsibility. You were in the fight helping all of us and you're still here now actually grieving with us and showing that you do truly care just because you made this mistake 
Do not let it consume you. You know, we're still here. We were, and it, it raised his respect level, not just with the sprites, but with everyone to see how he was doing this. Like he did not try to hide at all that this was his fault. He owned up to it and he's, he's, he's going to make it right. We actually have not as of yet, we have not gotten to the consequences of this blood oath just yet, but nope. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that it'll come up in the next book because it's been a while and I'm yep. pretty sure his year is almost up. So he's going to have to do something. It's, with it's getting close. Yeah. It, it, it's getting close. close. I think he's only like, I think where I'm at in book seven, I think he's like a month or two away mm -hmm. from what the consequences could end up being. And he has to, he has to wrap it up because in book seven, he ends up wrapping up two things that he made O's for that yeah. came up quicker than yeah. he planned. And I, and the I, one I thing, feel like they're going to coincide somehow yeah. together. And the one thing, um, guys, that you got to understand is you follow – Literally, most of the time you follow day by day. I mean, sometimes you get a week break in between what's going on, but most of it's literally Having day by day. Time, yeah, yeah. It's a chapter. With, it, this chapter is this day, and then you go to you go from day one, day two, day three, day four, day. F it, it, that's how the chapters break. But sometimes you get day sixteen, and it'll jump to oh day nineteen. Mm -hmm. But it, it, yeah. it's real. Aleron keeps it real tight of how close he keeps what's going on. Right. And uh, there's one thing that there's, there were a lot of factors during the battle that made certain scenes um, a bit more dangerous than others is with the mages that were there. Richter had already had um, a, I guess a pit of where he had buried the goblins that him and Sion yep. had clear out, cleared out of the Miss Village um, before in book one. And the one of the mages that was there was a death mage. Mm -hmm. So what made it even worse was she was able to raise those bodies out of that grave. You couldn't see the grave there, but she could sense it because of her magic. And that really, really help mess things up the, the other thing that helped uh the one the biggest thing that helped scion or not Sion, but richter was they're coming to the bridge and they're actually ended up about to get surrounded by a bunch of bugbears and alma releases what's called a side blast, side blast. yeah and when she releases a side blast it's actually like a confusing um mist that hits Mind your brain it kind of yeah. juggles every thought that you got and, and it, it ends up like fucking yeah it ends up fucking bears up and they freeze and that gives scion um richter and Sako, daniela. and daniela and um yoshi and um tarad a chance to break that lineup and when they break that lineup the bugbears actually end up retreating at that point in time yeah and and leaving the battle and that's when richter turns around and he goes what the fuck did i do you know yeah everything you know he was so happy to get alma everything was looking up he had the sprites on his side he got the tree and everything came crashing down on this man everything but the one thing i'll say is if it wasn't for Hisako, Yoshi, Tarad, Sion, and the higher ups of the elves and dwarves and humans standing behind Richter, going, you know what? Mistakes happen. We've all done it. The best thing you did was stand up and fight for your people. It yeah. was huge. And even at that point in time, Richter's still going, I fucked up. I made a huge mistake. You know, that's that's another thing I love about how how Aleron writes this is he doesn't candy coat anything. If Richter fucks up, Richter fucks up and he makes Richter realize he fucked up. It's not like, oh, yeah, I made a mistake, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go on with my day. Richter carries it for a long time. Like even in book seven, he's still carrying the bugbear attack. On his shoulder, especially pedal. Yeah, he always thinks of pedal. And late, late, later on, um, 
he ends up making this memorial mm -hmm. for everyone that they lost on that day. So and, before that happens, yeah, before right, the right. memorial, we get into dungeon diving. And in dungeon diving, we get Yoshi, Sion, and Daniela, and Rikta. And they go dungeon diving. And it's to unlock the second power of Richter's village, which ends up being life magic, right? I believe it's life think, magic. Yeah. yeah, it's the second magic is life magic. The battle so, is what made him have to go into that dungeon. He realizes his yeah. people need to get stronger. But to do that, first, he needs to get himself stronger. So, And he dungeon, has to level up his... Yeah, he has to level up the yeah. village's defense also. Because yep. everything has some type of level in this world. Like, if you've ever played an RPG game, you know that, you know, once you build a certain structure, there's still higher levels of that structure that you can go on and add on to it. And that's exactly how it works here with the Miss Village. The village itself can level up. So he yep. wants to make that happen so he can better protect his people. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, so he goes into it with Yoshi, Danielle, and Sion. That's all he takes. Nobody else. And for a while, things are going good. They're, they're kicking ass. Well, they get to this chamber. And like anybody that's ever played an RPG game, Richter likes to touch shit. Richter always fucking see and, and T Baby just <laughs> left. She she would appreciate this. Richter touches shit even more than fucking Jora. Stop yeah. touching shit. Richter. <laughs> Stop it right now. It's like fucking Fargo in the, the TV show Eureka that used to come on sci-fi. Some bullshit will happen and the show's like, you know, Fargo, why did you do that? He said, Because I'm Fargo. I always push the button. Yep. No, stop it. Stop being a Fargo, Richter. <laughs> no, he touches shit. And he ends up releasing this. So they fought for probably, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over about three chapters of what happens because I really don't want to spoil everything that goes on in this. Yeah, the eaters. You, you got to tell them about the eaters. Though. Okay, so when they first drop into the tunnel, so Richter touches the stone with because he gets a mark. And the mark is his Miss Village mark. So there's certain runes he has to think about. The mark presents itself, and he touches a stone. And as he's touching it, Sion, Yoshi, and Daniel go, nah! And then they drop into a pit. Mm -hmm. And they end up killing a bunch of these bugs. And these bugs are literally called eaters. What the eaters do is destroy <laughs> everything they eat root stem of everything now they're only supposed to come around every century so every hundred years these creatures are supposed to come around and yoshi is going what the fuck is going on because 60 years ago i cleared these bastards out mm -hmm. what are they doing back mm -hmm. so they end up escaping that and then uh Richter's like, no, 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 we need to go forward. Like, we need to continue. So you get a bunch of battling, leveling, battling, leveling, battling, and leveling. And like I said, I want to, I don't want to, you know, ruin everything for you guys. Um, so they get to the spot, and what is? Oh my god, I can't think of that. What is that creature that consumes the souls of the of the oh, two knights? Oh yeah, the damn, the undead dungeon bitch. Yeah, what the fuck I, is her name? I, I forget what her name is or what even her exact species is, but she's she's sadistic <sighs> as hell too. Yeah, and and in, in, in a very sexual way also. Like when she's very casting sexual. spells, she she like does these weird moaning sounds and grabs her breasts and and it it's just it's really <laughs> fucking weird. It's almost like uh. Almost like she, she's an undead succubus. That's what it's it is. Best, isn't it? It's the best comparison I can, I can think of. Yeah. So they end up, and, and this is a battle. I mean, this is a fucking fight. Even Yoshi is getting his ass. It, it, actually, Yoshi gets his ass kicked. Yeah. And Richter makes one of the best and dumbest decisions of his life. And he ends up making Futon flare. 
And when Futon flares, her magic kind of dims and she like covers her eyes because she's blinded and Richter's able to break the barrier. Now there's more to it. And he's able to break the barrier and kill her. When he kills her, this whole new light and world happens. AK, if you want to elaborate on that yeah. situation. Yeah, what happens is one of these one of the uh soldiers the undead soldiers that was under this uh succubus's command his spirit you know kind of both soldiers of, both of them yeah bo both of them were one is on the side that was attacking richter the other is on another side of this uh doorway that opens up it, it's a portal that you know shows this um really pretty looking world behind it and this uh i, I think she might have been a queen that from from that race comes out uh, her parent her spirit comes through and she starts telling richter the story um before that though she meets up with the other spirit that came out the body they were lovers mm -hmm. back in the day way 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 back in the day these are very very old shades uh, of ghosts that are in the story right here and she tells richter this, their story basically you know they ran into some trouble they had to flee to another plane of existence but the soldiers the undead soldiers that they were fighting they were part of her people the one in charge her her lover that she finally reunited with stayed behind so that everyone else can get to safety and they fell under the spell of this uh, undead succubus so as a boon for richter defeating her and um you know allowing them to reunite so all of their souls can now finally move on to another uh plane of existence she tells him she can take like one he can take one skill from all of them well not, well, not from all of them, but just one skill period out of what they have to share. Yeah. So he goes through and he sees like what could happen if he picked these any different skill. Um, take it from there because I, I, I forget exactly which one it was that he picked. So with that, he gets a chance to look at these different soldiers so one is a melee fighter one's a spear fighter one i think is a archery and he gets to the queen and her specialty is building from one spot to another now this is not an easy cask and she tells him this is not easy it, you have to have a certain magical ability um, when things work out, you have to have this certain craft with this certain craft and you have to have this point to this point. Like she's making like, this is going to be a really hard task for you to accomplish. Richter in his mind is going, you know, if I can travel from point A, basically he's wanting a Peter Baelish from point A to point B like that. Mm -hmm. And in his mind, he's going, you know what? That makes a lot of sense for what I want to do. And that's what he chooses. He chooses portal building. Portal building. When he chooses that, he levels up 30 fucking spots in that one magic. Not including the 5 to 10 spots he levels up in life and air magic. And he ends up unlocking life magic for his village. Now in his village, there's a pillar. <clears throat> On this pillar of four different stones, you have... Air magic, life magic, dark magic, and water. Water. And so now you have air magic lit up, life magic lit up. The only two left are dark and air. And so he's like, dude, sweet. That was a victory. But in the process, Scion is the only one walking around. Daniela got her fucking ass handed to her. And Yoshi's still knocked the fuck out. 
So we go into the scene where they're trying to escape, trying to figure out how to get out of the dungeon. Yoshi's still asleep. Daniela's still sick as fuck. And the hole is really small. And Sion's like, you know what? I'll go through that. AK, you take it away with Sion get, trying to get out. Oh, man. Yeah, this... Um, I felt uh, really, really bad for Sion having to go through what he went through in this uh, little passage. But here is exactly where we find out that, you know, why Scion had such hatred towards humans. It basically took us back in time where uh, Scion was, you know, a, a young sprite trying to make a name for himself in the world. Him and his best friend go exploring. And they end up finding this... So, uh, what was his friend's name? Ah, uh, Curian. Yeah. So when Scion's crawling up, he hits a wall and this face forms. Mm -hmm. And the face asks him, why, why did, did Curian die? die? And Scion, and I'll let you continue right now. Yeah, Scion, he, he blames himself. That's for... Okay, before I get into that, let me just say what he saw. He goes in, he sees him and him and Kyrian in their younger days. They go out, they see this human camp, and humans have a bunch of different uh, creatures held captive. And their plan is uh, either to sell them or eventually kill them. And they're fighting them right now. Away. Yeah, they're they're I think yeah they're making them fight right now. Um, so. Kyrian is like, okay, we need to go back, get some of the guards, come back, and then, you know, handle this problem. And Scion, he, he's headstrong right now. He wants to prove that, you know, they, they could actually do it on their own. So, you know, he he silences Kiri. He says, no, come on, let's do this. And they both end up getting got, pretty much. They're trying they to free them. They're trying to free the animals. And While Kyrian, they were free them. yeah, and Kyrian gets hit by a. It's a certain type of spider, but its claws have a paralyzing venom in them. I think so, is what something happened. like that. Something like that. No, no, yeah. actually, no, because Kyrian feels every bite, and with every bite, he's yelling, "Scion, help me! Scion, help me!" Yeah, and Scion can't do anything <clears throat> because he's locked in a cage. And he's no, no, no. to watch this. No, he's not locked in a cage. That's that's not that I'm talking about when Is they it? get caught. No, when they get caught, they're they're getting ready to release something, and there's a spider next to it, and it hits Kyrian and it paralyzes him. Then and that's what Kyrian alerts the guards. screams. Yeah, Kyrian screams right. out, and that's what alerts the guards. And before Scion can react, he gets knocked out cold. So mm -hmm. when we come to, Kyrian is fucked up. Like his nose is bloody. He's got two black eyes. And, yeah. and Scion is bound behind his back. His legs are tied. And he's muffled. And I can't remember the guy's name that's asking him what's going on. But he's like, who are you? What are you doing here? Yeah, and he's randomly just basically just talking shit to Scion yeah. the whole so, time. We go through this whole situation. He's like, you know what? Fuck it. You're not going to give me the answers I want to hear. Your friend's going to fight this. I can't remember what the creature is, but when it's I hungry. It was, but it was it, horrible. Yeah. When it's hungry, it fucking kills you. And it kills you slowly. It doesn't kill you fast. It kills you slowly. Yeah. So for an hour, Scion literally listens to his friend dying over, but the problem is over. yeah but the problem is is this friend had given where the hearth tree was and where his sako was it had, he had spilled his beans on where the sprites were and I blame him after the torture that he had endured i didn't blame really him but scion scion did so 
the second time that Sion goes through the stream, the, 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 the voice asks him, why did your friend die? And Sion goes, I killed him. And he goes back through the vision and he relives it again. So basically he's living in his body, but he can't change what's going on mm -hmm. until the fourth time. The fourth time when he admits that Kyrian made the decision to Himself. go with Sion, it wasn't Sion's fault. Sion can actually interact with Kyrian a little bit. And then he wakes up and he realizes he's being dragged out of that hole. And Richter had actually climbed up that little fucking hole and started dragging him out. out. Yeah. And I think Richter was only able to do that because Sion finally was able Broke to it. let go. Yeah, because I th there's a riddle. And I can't remember exactly how the riddle goes, but it's basically if one one person enters, but if another enters, he will die. Is basically how the riddle goes. So every time Richter tries to go in this hole, it closes on Sion. Mm -hmm. It literally closes on him. So the fourth time when Sion actually admits that it wasn't his fault, Arian's fault, the hole doesn't close on Richter, and Richter's able to pull him out. Right. So after that, Yoshi's gotten better, Daniela's good, and they end up escaping. So we've actually been on for two hours, and we made it legitimately. Yeah, we legitimately, again, only made it halfway through the fucking there, book. Yeah. <laughs> so, AK, two hours in, we're going to call it a final for this. Let me amend. Right, if you want to give your final thoughts and kind of a prelude what we're going to get into on the second half of this book, go for it. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we're here. Um, we, we are in the dungeon at the moment. And, you know, they, they Richter pulls Scion out. And the adventure will continue from there. There's this uh, another chamber that they find. There's a kick-ass waterfall and a whole bunch of other different traps and whatnots that they have to get through. Um, and it's it, it, it's some, some pretty spectacular things happen. And I I can't wait to talk about it. It'll be awesome. I don't know. It'll probably be another couple weeks before we can get back into it, depending on our schedules. But uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to hang with us. We really appreciate it. This is really such an awesome series. I highly recommend all you guys pick it up. Definitely also get the audible, get the audio book when if you get the physical book as well, because they you'll want to actually <coughs> how everything plays out. It's yeah, perfect. and 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 like I said, guys, I love Audible. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of books on there that don't do this, but if you can go to Kindle or go to Amazon. And you yeah, have a Kindle, yeah. And you have a Kindle app on your phone. Get that fucking Whisper Sync. It's legitimately half the fucking price of Audible, and you get the physical fucking copy of the book as well. It, I love it. It's well it's, worth it. Yeah, it's one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. So, until next time, guys. Live, protect your allies, crush your enemies. Survive. Gnomes rule! <laughs>